This is a production of the Gold Arrow Podcast Network. Hello, and welcome to the Gold Arrow Camp Podcast, a podcast for friends of Gold Arrow Camp. Throughout the year, we join you here to bring your day some of what makes Gold Arrow special. Our goal is to help you have fun, make friends, and grow throughout the year, not just when you're at GAC. Since we can't get together in real life, we gather around the virtual campfire here on the podcast. We'll have some of your favorite parts of morning assembly, like wows and joke of the day. We have interviews with experienced campers and some of your favorite counselors. We think it's a lot of fun, and we're glad you joined us here on the Gold Arrow Podcast until we can get together again next summer at camp. This is podcast episode five. Today we're talking about getting outside to experience the awe of nature with Crater. That's right, friends. We're back together here on the podcast, and if you've been with us before, you know that we like to start every podcast with some positive information, some positive vibes to send your way to get things going in the right direction. And this is a thought from a guy named Les Brown. He says, there are 1,440 minutes in a day, which means you have 1,440 opportunities to make a positive change. And I can't speak for Mr. Brown, but I can speak for me, and I know that you're going to do that today. Maybe not 1,400 times. But I bet you can make a positive change 10 times. You have the right mindset. You know you're going to try to do it. And that's why we believe you'll make a positive change. You live in an amazing place. You know amazing people. You are amazing. And now it's time for my personal favorite part of the podcast. We get to read some wows. That's right. You could send us paper wows. You could mail them to the camp office. You could more easily email them wow or wows at goldarrowcamp.com you could hashtag us on twitter or on instagram hashtag gack wow we uh we dive into the old bucket of wows here are some from this time around to bambino thank you for being a great friendly counselor who makes every activity a blast and also being an amazing squared answer that's from remy to moon thank you for being the best cit slash counselor slash friend ever Love you, girl. Never change. From Macy. To Maya. Thanks for making the past seven years so amazing. I have loved being your cabin mate and friend. You are amazing. Love ya. And then two hearts have been drawn from Macy. To Macy. Thank you for being such a great person to be around and being extremely kind to everyone you meet. Your optimistic attitude brightens everybody's day. From Remy. And finally, one for Lumos. Thanks for hanging out with us. Come back to L.A. really soon. From Griffin, Hudson, and Hadley. Again, if you want to get your wows on the podcast, you can email wow at goldarrowcamp.com. You can hashtag us, Twitter or Instagram, hashtag GAC wow. We have some poems for you. I like poems. We, uh, we like to start a poetry corner with some, uh, some well-thought-out haikus. A personal favorite of mine, titled Carnival Face Painting. They request kittens. I can only drop puppies. They all get puppies. At Gold Arrow Camp, one of our core values, one of the things we believe in is that it's important to get outside and experience the awe of nature. And one of the main ways we do that with campers is through our backpacking program. And today we brought onto the show uh, a backpacking counselor from this past year. And so here it is, my interview with the one, the only, Crater. All right, Crater, 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 welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad I'm glad to be here. I'm, we're thrilled that you could be here. Um, all right, so since not everybody knows you, could you tell us a little bit about where you're from and what you do for us at camp? Perfect. Uh, I'm from Southern Oregon, so if anyone knows where Medford, Oregon, or Ashland, Oregon are, I'm from the Rogue Valley, from that part of Oregon. Uh, what I did at camp was I was a backpacking counselor, meaning I took... Uh, the wonderful boys and girls of Gold Arrow Camp, out on backpacking trips. All of them lasted about 24 hours. We went out, had a great time, did some overnight trips, obviously, had some beautiful time playing games, cooking food, and just really getting to know one another under the stars. So that's what I did, attempted to do for Gold Arrow Camp. That sounds awesome. Um, We're actually talking to you this week because uh, we're talking about the theme of getting outside and experiencing the awe of nature at camp. Um, Hmm. 
Can you think of a specific time when maybe you were out backpacking that you really experienced the awe of nature while you were at camp? Yeah, I mean, not to sound cliche, but I'd say every time we went out, I think it was a beautiful time to experience nature. I mean, just because every kid comes from a different background. So for some of them, they have been out in the woods, and for some of them, they've never stepped in the woods. So I think it was very important when we went out just to notice the little things, like certain parts of the trails were very green, and some kids were like, oh, I've never seen that much green before, especially coming from maybe some of the East Coast places. Uh, for some kids, it was maybe the bodies of water we stopped at. They were like, I didn't think a lake, you know, this big or this clear could be out here. Once we got out here, I assumed it was just going to be rocks and trees. Um, another thing that happened is when we did see that, that meteor shower, I think the kids were blown away by that. And that was crazy to see just because for the kids and for all of us counselors, that was, I think, like a once in a lifetime thing. So to be able to see that and experience that with those kids, I think was phenomenal just because you get you know, obviously we see a lot of those trails every day, so we have to keep that enthusiasm. But when you see something like that, there's, you, I mean, it's hard to hold back the enthusiasm. So to be able to show kids that nature and to be able to experience that with them, it's just, it's incredible. So do you think like that the meteor shower last summer was like the most spectacular thing you saw last summer? Or was there something else that was like more spectacular nature? Oh, most definitely. I would say that was the most spectacular nature that I was able to witness with the kids. I think that was something just on its own, just in itself, it was incredible. So I would say that was the most most amazing experience for me. Awesome. Um, why do you, obviously you think nature is important and getting out in nature is important and, and we clearly agree. Why do you think it's so important for young people today to get out into kind of wild nature? That's a good question. I think it's important to get out in wild nature because I don't think, as I said earlier, I don't think everyone has that opportunity. I think it's really easy to get caught up in life's momentum, especially if you live in a big city to where you just move from point A to point B, you move from one step to the other, and you don't really think about what's just outside the boundaries or like the confines of your city. And so I think if you don't, if you don't take the time to go out, you don't take that opportunity to go out and see just what the earth has and it's just natural state, it's really easy to be overlooked. And I like you just asked me, like, what's the most beautiful thing? I think it's easy to go out in nature and look out and be like, wow, I didn't know this is here. I feel, I feel like I hear so many people say that, like, wow, I can't believe, like, this is nature. But it's kind of funny we call it nature because I just feel like that's our planet. Everything mm -hmm. that we have, we've done to it. And so that's what's natural. And so I think it's incredible just for people to go out and be able to see that and be like, I didn't know this was here when in reality, like, you know, that's that was there long before we were all born and that's going to be there long after we were born. So I think it's important to see that because that's something that's, that's life lasting. And that's something that we didn't build. Like kind of put us in our place in the universe, let you know where you stand. Exactly. Yeah. You can just go out there and just think like you, whatever conception you have of, of yourself or what have you, you can go out in nature and just completely have that shattered and just be like, wow, where am I right now? I have no idea. And you can just live in that moment because everything around you is just so, so incredible and so new, yet it's not new, if right. that makes any sense. No, it makes total sense. All right, so camp's over. You're back in the real world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sad face, sad trombone. Um what are you what did you take from camp back to your regular life what what things do you kind of take with you back to the real world uh geez well you know i'm a human services major at school so i think what i took with me is just the idea of what i learned a lot from the kids was just the fact that if i can show someone or teach someone just one thing uh just maybe about themselves have them focus on something about themselves or maybe just discover a new talent, if you will. I think I just realized that it's important to to reflect on the small things in life. What I mean by that is if we go on a backpacking trip and maybe a kid who's never packed his own pack before uh, has troubles the first day, but then the next day packs it up on their own and is just ready to go and they're super happy to be there. I think for me, that was such an accomplishment just in a short 24-hour period. So I think for me back home, I just keep that in mind when I'm going out on my daily business, whether that's at work or whatever that may be, because if I'm able to just to introduce something new to someone or to show someone that they do have what it takes to be where they want to be in the case of like, you know, taking a kid on backpack, if they have a, if they can just be, you know, if they can yeah. pack their own bag and be who they want to be, be where they want to be and realize that they have the power to do that. I think if I can transfer that back home, that is the thing that I took the most from that is showing people or attempting to show people that they have what it takes to 
be who they want to be and they have what it takes to to push themselves they just have to realize that they have that wow okay that's powerful stuff to take home <laughs> yeah that i mean i'm attempting right attempting to bring um, it with me right so you talked a little bit there about people who've maybe never gone backpacking before um i know a lot of campers are super apprehensive about backpacking or they think oh i'm not gonna like it it's so much walking uh what advice do you have for campers that maybe have never gone backpacking before and they're going to go backpacking this year? Um, what advice do you have for them for that first time backpacking? My advice, honestly, is just to go with it. And I know that's hard to think about when you're like, I don't want to do this walking. I don't want to carry this pack. I don't want to do this. But if you just have a, a positive attitude about it and you trust your counselors, I think that makes it so much more rewarding, in my opinion. Because instead of having that negative mindset of like, this bag is heavy, you know, we've walked five miles, we've done all this, I think it's so much easier to just be like, look where I am, like you said earlier, like, look at this nature, look where I am, uh, look who I'm with, you know, these counselors obviously like adore me, you know, all, I'm with all my other friends, like we're all in this together, high school musical. So like, instead of looking at it in a negative light, like, I would suggest looking at it in a positive light. And so say these kids go out on this backpacking trip and they come back and say, you know what, it wasn't for me. As long as they kept that positive attitude, at least they can come back knowing like, hey, I tried my best and I thought it was fun in this aspect, but now I know going forward, maybe next time I would like to try a day hike or something like that. But at least have a positive attitude about it to where when you go out, you can come back and, and pull something from that. You know, whether it's seeing the nature, whatever, whether it's uh, you know facing adversity with the people that you know and the people that are close to you, you know, something like that. And so I would su suggest going at it with a positive attitude and just trying to get the most out of it, just squeezing that orange and trying to get all the juice out of it. Oh, got to squeeze the orange until there's nothing but pork. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I know that when we come to pick you guys up with the luggage truck in the van, it's the change between the drop-off and the pickup is often pretty impressive that kids come down from the hike and suddenly they're they're raving about what an amazing trip it was and what they accomplished and – Every time. And, and often when they get out of the van, they're not nearly so excited. But I think that that speaks <laughs> to what kind of the backpacking staff does about positive attitude and accomplishment and goal setting. Um, yes. What do you think campers can do every day at home to capture some of what makes camp special? Jeez. I think what they can do back home to make sure that they keep just to – so you asked me what they can do to keep camp special, correct? Well, or keep, how, like, the how, can they, camp or... how can they take some of camp home with them? What can they do at home? Oh, perfect. Uh, I just see on these kids' faces, no matter who they are, whether I know them really well or if I've just seen them in passing, they always have just such a big smile on their face, such a positive attitude. They always seem to be having so much fun. And I know that when, like I said earlier, when you're back in the real world, it's really easy to get caught up in momentum. You know, I'm going to school, I'm doing my homework, I'm doing this, I, I've got sports, I'm doing that. And so I think for the kids, if they can just, you know, at Gold Arrow Camp, I get, you know, you're very busy, but at the same time, you have that time to have so much fun and just be having the biggest smile on your face and be loving yourself so much. And so I think for them, if they can take that home with them just the fact that like the smiles the fun all of that they can realize that you know that goes home with you that doesn't sure. stop at camp and I know it's easy to think you know like oh I can only have this much fun at Gold Arrow Camp and you can have that much fun at Gold Arrow Camp let me tell you however you can also take that home with you so if that means you know reaching out to those friends that you made at camp like please do that if that means uh, going out and, and meeting new people and having that outgoing attitude you had with the other cabins like at school you can do that have a big smile on your face and just know that the fun is due to you and all the other campers that fun is not because of the area that has to do with the people there as much as the gold arrow camp area is surrounding area is beautiful it has to do with you guys and it has to do with you guys as campers so know that and take that with you back home because that is what is important in life is to have those big hearts, have that love for other people, have those smiles on your faces because that can't be taught. So I would say if they can take that home with them, they're going to go places. Oh, that's that's good stuff. Take it, take it <laughs> home and choose to be happy. All right, we're yes, going to wrap sir. this up with the speed round. I've got four Oof. questions that I ask everybody who comes on the podcast. Here What's your go. favorite repeat after me song? My favorite repeat after me song? Oh my gosh. Uh, hey, hey, Bo Diddley Bob. Hey, hey, but oh, you like the long ones. That is a lengthy song. Yes, but the kids love it. Once you explain it to them, it takes a few rounds, but it takes off from there. I'm, I'm with you there. 
Uh, what's your favorite item on the snack bar? Or on the, not on the snack bar, I'm sorry, on the salad bar. Oh, my favorite item? They only had it once, but it's banana peppers. And I, oh. I had it one glorious day and never again. So it kind of – it was just – out, just out of my grass the rest of the summer. I will make a note of it. We'll see if we can get them there a little bit more often. Uh, what's Sounds your good. favorite chapstick flavor? Oh, my favorite chapstick flavor. You know what? I'm going to have to go with Monkey's Mountain Mint. It's ah, the most popular. Yeah. Obviously. It's, it's, it was kind of the hit of the summer, I thought. It, it was the summer, I thought. But, you know, I don't want to go too far. And last but not least, what's your real name? Uh, my real name oh, is... Oh, I'm so sorry. We're out of time. We're going to have to wrap the interview up there. Next time we talk to Crater, we'll figure out what his real name is. Crater, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Hey, thank you so much. So I appreciate it. It was a blast. In a world with far too much seriousness, far too much drama, we bring you something different. The joke of the cast. Why is it called joke of the day? If it's not funny. Hey, do you guys know what kind of dinosaur has the largest vocabulary? It's a thesaurus. <laughs> thesaurus. And now, it's time for another Gaxpiration with Sunshine. For this week's Gaxpiration, we have a guest Gaxpiration reader. It's Yams, a JC from summer 2016 with this week's Gaxpiration. Let your smile change the world, but don't let the world change your smile. And that does it for another episode of the Gold Arrow Camp podcast. We need to thank Sunshine and Yams for putting together that Gaxpiration at our recent Gak party in L.A. I want to thank Crokey for the haiku about carnival face paint. I want to thank Ben Sound Music for our intro and outro music. I want to thank Crater for being a very special guest and talking to us about getting out into the outdoors. I want to thank you for listening. We really appreciate that you take the time out of your day to spend it with us. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, rate and review on iTunes. It helps us move up the search rankings for people who might not know Gold Arrow Camp but need a little bit of it in their lives. You know who they are. This is Soy, and I'll save a marshmallow for you.